Welcome to the Bee Reporter's Inbox on MLB.com, presented by Edward Jones. I'm Jason Beck, MLB.com's Tigers reporter, with Mark Pierce asking the questions. Mark, what do we have first? First, from Michael, why do you think Cabrera doesn't get more respect locally? We've been lucky to watch history made nightly. Too many Lions fans? Well, you know, it's odd timing because just before we were going on air here, we had Miguel Cabrera out taking early BP. Brad Osmus was uh, throwing him pitches, and he was working on things, and I think it was kind of a sign of what he's been going through this year, kind of going through his struggles. And I think that's one reason why he hasn't gotten, at least for this year, the respect that we're accustomed to him seeing is that I think he's set such a high standard over the years that as he gets older and as the aging process kind of takes something away from him, that we think that he's done, whereas I, I don't think he's anywhere near done as far as some defeats of his career. And we're actually nearing a, a very interesting time where he's he's nearing milestones. I think once he's actually done, we're going to recognize him as one of the best right-handed hitters of all time, certainly of his generation. And I guess why he doesn't get the respect – he wasn't a career-long Tiger. I think that factors into it. He came here via trade just about 10 years ago. But also, I think that um, it's just because he had such a great peak part of his career you know, about four or five years ago with the Triple Crown, with the batting titles, with, uh, you know, just with all the feats, with playing through injuries. That as the injuries have piled up, I think people have come to expect so much that is kind of having a hard time accepting that, you know, even great ones get old. Mark, what do we have next? All right, from Matt, have Mikey Matuk and Woody Harrelson ever been in the same room? Well, I have not seen Woody Harrelson in a Tigers clubhouse or the Major League clubhouse. I have not seen Mikey Matuk in any movies, although he might have been in one. I haven't checked his IMDb page. They do kind of have very similar eyes to where – you kind of look, and I think if you took away the uh, the hair difference, it would kind of uh, – you could keep, see some similarities there, and you'd be able to do kind of a separated birth thing going on there. All right. From Eric, if McCann continues to struggle the rest of 2017, who's starting catcher in 2018? Resign Avila, McCann, and Hicks. No other Tigers. MILB is ready. I think McCann's a catcher for the long term. Uh, not so much because of the offense, but just – his defensive skills, what he does against the ba opposing base running games, and also how he works with the pitching staff. I think they look at that. They look at the work he's put in, the trust he's earned with the pitching staff, especially with the young pitchers who are here and, and the guys who are coming up soon, that he's earned that credibility to where they want him guiding these pitchers going forward. Uh, could Alex Avila return next year, even if he is traded here by the deadline next week? Yeah, it's possible. I think Tigers love what he's done. He's obviously got the connection with his father being the GM. But I think more than anything, I think this is McCann's team going forward. He's going to have to hit at some point. I think he's shown the ability to hit left-handed pitching pretty well. But he's got to at least be able to hold his own against right-handers. The good news is for the Tigers is they've got some catchers who are in the system who have a chance to kind of take some of the workload off of them long term. Grayson Griner's kind of had some struggles this year, but the Tigers like what they've seen about from him defensively and also working with the pitching staff. They drafted a couple of very good young catchers. Sam McMillan was a high school pick that they paid a very large bonus to uh, woo out of uh, a college commitment to Florida. They also have Joey Morgan, uh, you know, a very early round draft pick out of Washington who they think has got a chance to be a very good all-around catcher. Those guys are going to be a few years away, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them on the horizon sooner rather than later to, to kind of help out and kind of provide the, the foundation for the uh, for the next generation here. All right. From Josie, how hard, it would, how hard would it be to see Verlander go after spending his entire career with the Tigers? I think it would be very hard, and I think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing such a – difficult but also delicate situation with the Tigers and trade talks with them. Here's a guy who not only has been kind of an icon of the franchise for the last more than a decade now, but also I think if you look at Mike Gilch's legacy as owner of the Tigers, Verlander and Cabrera are the two focal points of it. What they've done is being arguably the best pitcher and 
and best hitter of the you know over the last decade here and what Illich did to bring them in you know, he paid good money to bring in Cabrera sign him long term they gave up a lot of prospects to pull off that trade with Florida Verlander they made him the second overall pick in 04 they brought him up they made a commitment to, to sign him long term over Max Scherzer or some other guys they these guys are kind of cornerstones and, and short of a World Series title I think these guys are going to be Ilch's legacy and I think it would be very difficult to see Verlander winning a World Series while being paid largely by the Tigers having his salary offset largely by the Tigers to go win somewhere else so I think that's part of the difficulty you see as the trade rumors pile up and as you see interest kind of build that yeah the Tigers have to figure out a way to handle this gracefully, but also figure out how to build for the future. I don't know for sure if a deal is going to happen. I think the Tigers certainly want to look into it. I think if they're going to try to rebuild quickly, getting a good, fair return for them without having to pay a ton of money is a huge point in doing that. But at the same point time, they have to know what he means to not only this team, but this city. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how they handle that going forward. From Nick, what are the odds Verlander does get traded at the deadline? I'm still kind of in the area where I'll believe it when I see it. But I think the chances are a little bit better than they were a week ago. I think if you'd ask me at this point last week, I would have said the, lot, the odds were very long. I think now the better he's pitched, the more interest you see building in him. You can see teams like the Cubs maybe trying to find a, a way to fit him in. The Dodgers with Kershaw's in, injury. Not so much that you get Verlander for, for the Dodgers to win the NL West. They could probably do that with anybody filling Kershaw's slot until September. I think any team that gets Verlander is doing it with an eye towards October, an eye towards what Verlander has done for a track record in postseason games, in big postseason games. So I that's where the interest lies. I think as we get closer to that July 31st deadline, it's going to be interesting to see if the Tigers and other teams can find a middle ground, trying to find a comfortable position where the Tigers maybe take on some of the money, but not a ton. But there's also a fair prospect return to where the Tigers feel like this a deal would give them a jump start on remaking this roster and getting younger going forward. From Taylor, will Shane Green close when Justin Wilson goes? That's one of the interesting questions we've kind of had as we've looked towards the deadline and the likelihood that Justin Wilson gets dealt. There's no real automatic choice as the closer of the near future. I think everybody sees Joe Jimenez as the long-term closer here, um, probably sooner rather than later. I don't know if Jimenez necessarily gets the call right away. After Wilson, you know, if and when Wilson gets dealt, uh, Shane Green could be a stopgap guy. I think Bruce Rondon could get another shot there. If you remember, he had the closer shot for a little while down the stretch in 2015. Uh, I think Alex Wilson would have been a logical candidate earlier in the year. I think his struggles make it kind of dicey to, to throw him into that type of role. But there really aren't obvious candidates. But but then again, when Francisco Rodriguez was taken out of the closer's role, I don't know if anybody would have identified Justin Wilson as an obvious closer in waiting either. I think he had to pitch his way into it. And as he did, he really became a guy who molded his game into the role and kind of adopted that mentality. I, I think that's what the Tigers would want to see out of somebody. It might be a situation where they give a couple different guys a shot and maybe go closer by committee, see what some of these guys have, see if anybody rises up to the role. From Colby, who exactly do you see getting traded this year? I think Justin Wilson's the most likely. I think interest is high. You've seen anywhere from 14 to 16 teams at different points here over the last couple of weeks expressing interest. He's a guy who, even though you have control over him next year, I think it'd be hard to find a bigger return than you're likely going to get for him right now. I think you'd be selling, selling him at a high point right now, ideally maximizing your prospect return. He's probably the most likely. I think Alex Avila's got a pretty decent shot at getting traded. Um, you, you look at teams around the league. It's not necessarily you know a bidding war, 
but you can see teams with a clear need for a veteran catcher who can give you a good at bat and who can handle a pitching staff well. The Cubs have been long rumored as a logical fit, even though they haven't found uh, a, a working deal quite yet. That would be a, a team I would look forward to maybe formulate a deal, maybe packaging him with somebody else. I think after that, Justin Verlander might be next on the list if they can work out the, the complications regarding the salary and regarding getting a fair return on prospects. After that, it becomes very interesting. I don't know if there's if there's going to be a surprise deal. I think anything after that would be a little bit of a surprise. You've heard Shane Green's name mentioned a little bit, that there's been some interest there, although I'd be surprised if the Tigers would give him up that easily. Uh, you've heard a little bit of Jose Iglesias, but it's not necessarily a, a raging market in terms of teams looking for shortstops, at least contending teams. And then there's that question about Michael Fulmer. I think if the Tigers were willing to deal him, they would find no shortage of, of suitors. The question would be, would the Tigers get enough in a return to justify giving up really a bright young pitcher who's got five more years of control and really who's set up to be really the, the, the face of the franchise in a few years here. From Mike, how is Jacoby Jones doing? Jacoby's going through some growing pains right now, Triple A Toledo. I think it, it's not altogether unexpected. I think there were some hopes raised off of his strong spring training that there'd be a little bit more play discipline. But I think you're seeing a growth process right now where – He's got to learn how to handle pitchers. He's got to learn how to shrug off pitches that even AAA pitchers are using to get him out. Maybe not chase so much outside the strike zone. Look for your pitch. Kind of refine what you're looking for. Hone that batter's eye. And kind of get an idea of what not only what the strike zone is, but I think as Alex Avila and some other veteran hitters would put it, what your strike zone is as a hitter and identify what you can hit and kind of shrug off the rest. That's what you see Jacoby Jones going through right now. I don't know if it's going to be a quick process. I think people forget that this is still a relatively young player who's got a lot to learn. I think defensively, he's close to, if not major league ready right now. I think if offense wasn't a major concern, you could see him out there tomorrow handling center field at Comerica Park and really holding his own. But I think the combination of Jones's struggles at AAA with what Mikey Matook has done up here have afforded the Tigers a little bit more patience than they thought they were going to have. And I think even if the Tigers make some more deals and have to remake their lineup, I think Matook's a center fielder going forward and that you know, you've got a little bit more time before they're really forced to, to look at Jacoby Jones as an everyday guy quite yet. From Jeffrey, is Daniel Norris and Fulmer the future of the Tigers lineup? I think as far as the rotation, those are kind of your cornerstones. I think those two guys are in there. I think Matthew Boyd has a chance to work his way in there. If he can build off of what he's been able to do in his better spots this year, I think he still has a little bit of learning to do, but you see some signs of promise. But I also think you have to wait a couple of years and see what you get out of the, the crop of prospects that are coming up. You've got four starting pitching prospects they're showing promise have a chance to kind of be building blocks and rotation going forward um bo burrows is probably the first on the list he's a 20 year old at double a eries he's showing signs of what made him so popular the tigers when he was a first round pick a couple years back you've got alex Fiedo, the tigers first round pick this year he's not going to pitch in the minor leagues quite yet they're going to give him a little bit of rest before starting him out in the system next year but i think even Tigers officials who are normally cautious will tell you he's got a chance to move quickly through the system. You've got Matt Manning, who most lists will recognize is, as the Tigers' top prospect overall, if not you know just the top starting pitching prospect. He's in A ball right now, but he's got a chance to move quickly if he learns. But I think the Tigers want to use patience on him since he is still a teenager. And then you have Kyle Funkhauser, who was a fourth-round pick last year, well, I think the Tigers felt like they got a steal from because he was such a highly regarded prospect a year before he went out of the University of Louisville. He's another guy who, once he makes a learning curve at, at Class A ball, he's got a chance to move quickly. And I don't know if he'll be a frontline guy, but I think he's got a chance to be a nice guy in the middle of a rotation where if you combine those guys 
with Fulmer and with Norris, once Norris makes the learning curve, there's a depth in starting pitching here that I think could carry this team through some growth, some growing pains as they try to figure out how to rebuild their lineup. And it's going to at least make this team entertaining, if not competitive, going forward. All right, and finally from Chris, do we get to see any of the kids get called up if someone gets traded, like Stewart? Uh, I don't think you're going to see Chris and Stewart quite yet, even if they do trade another position guy. I think they, because he hasn't seen any time at AAA yet, they wanted to get some time at AAA ball. He's shown some, some very good signs at AA Erie, but I think they want to see a little bit more play discipline there to go with the power and to go with the run production. They want to get him a little bit more exposure to veteran pitchers at AAA before exposing him up here. You know, maybe you get a September call up right at the end of the season. But even then, I'd be kind of surprised if we see him this year. I think the target for him is more next season. I think you're, you're more likely to see like a Joe Jimenez as a late season call up, get him some more exposure in the bullpen. He's had a couple short looks in the Tigers bullpen, although nothing extensive and nothing in any sort of high leverage situation. I think you could see some more of the AAA relievers get a look. Um, You'd like to say that if Burroughs finishes hot at Double Erie, that, that maybe they would push the envelope on him. But even then, I'd be kind of surprised. I think it would be some very special circumstances to see Burroughs in the major leagues at age 20. I, I think really more you'd be looking at early to the middle of next year for some of these guys to really get a look at some of these building blocks for the future. And I think that's it. Thanks for watching Beat Reporters Inbox and MLB.com presented at by Edward Jones. Tune in again next time and uh, have a good day.